So if you remember from the beginning of the lecture and the end of last lecture, we have that the probability of a transition from state n to state m is equal to um, delta t over h bar squared, which just comes from squaring this part, of that's the perturbation part of the wave function, uh, times the squared of the integral uh, of the perturbation applied to the initial state, um, project that onto the final state, and um, square that. Okay, so if we if we um, apply this to the current situation where we have uh, an electric field with magnitude psi, then we then we get the following. Okay, then we get this. Okay, we have. Um, uh, E, uh, elementary charge times the magnitude of the electric field psi times delta t over h bar squared times the square of the integral uh, su the psi m star again m is the final state um, times x uh, acting on psi sub n um, where n is the initial state we square that and that will give us um, our transition probability and <clears throat> it's really important to notice at this point that we have an integral between symmetric uh, over a symmetric range minus infinity to infinity and remember uh, because in the infinite well this is going to reduce to minus L over 2 to L over 2 um, because uh, the wave function is zero uh, uh, outside that range in case we have symmetric a symmetric integration range and we see that X here is an odd function that means that uh, when you if you replaced uh, this means that if you integrate uh, if you integrate an odd function over symmetric over symmetric um, range you'll get zero okay and because um, it's just as much positive as negative okay and so this is this is odd okay and so what we see that if psi n and psi m, so if the states n and m have the same parity, that is this, if, if, if they're both even or both odd, okay, then um, if you have uh, two even functions, you get an even function. If you have the product of two even functions is an even function. The product of two odd functions is an even function also. So if psi m and psi n have the same parity, that is they're both even or both odd, then what we're left with is an odd function because we have uh, an even and an odd. Okay, so uh, again, x is odd. And so when we do that integral, we're going to get zero. Okay. All right. So if n and m have the same parity, that is, they're both odd or they're both even, then the integrand, okay, the integrand is an odd function of x, and integrating over the symmetric boundary uh, range will identically yield zero. Okay, so that means the transition, the probability for the transition from one to three, between one and three, one and five, two and four, two and six, etc., is identically equal to zero in this approximation. Okay, this is again, this is approximation. This is perturbation theory. It's not exact. It's it's a uh, it's a good approximation uh, in many cases, but it's an approximation nevertheless. Now again, odd parity means that when you replace for odd parity, when a function has odd parity, that means that when you replace uh, x with minus x, the function, which in this case is just the integrand um, of that integral, uh, so the function goes to minus, uh, so the f of x, f of minus x goes to minus f of x. So again, when you replace x with minus x, you get negative of the original function. Okay, even parity means that the function is unchanged when you go when you replace x with minus x. Okay, so f of minus x is equal to f of x. Okay, so clearly the function x itself, the trivial function x itself is odd and cosine functions will be uh, even and sine functions will be odd when you integrate them over symmetric boundaries. Okay, okay so uh, I'll, st I'll stop here and then we'll pick this up.